live. Oh, I need to live. put Facebook on my phone. Okay, thank you. Do you want, should I be on Facebook? Yeah, probably. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. We, you want to say what? That we have both? Okay. We have, oh, oh. Facebook. We have Please people. silence your phone. Please. We have tel know. 12 people on YouTube and four on Facebook. 28 people on <coughs> Six on Facebook. Okay, I'm going to keep drawing while count. people hop on. If you guys can see, I'm just drawing with the twin tone. Yeah, now they can. Now they can see? Now they can see what you're drawing. Hi, everyone. Hi, Brenny. Ooh, Brenny, I like that name. Brenny, hi Kate. How's everyone's Thursday? <laughs> I think what day it was. It tells me on Facebook, say something, so let's make art knows you're here. Hi Jamie. Okay, we're just I'm just drawing as more people hop on. Kate, January was my first learning box. I'm so excited. Yay! I'm so glad, Kate. That's great that you hopped on board. We've introduced one video so far. Kate, I'll have to go back. Did you, Kate, did you share in the Facebook group? Because I'll go back and look after this if I haven't seen it already. Danison! Hi, buddy. We got your Christmas card, and I just saw it. It was so cute. Thank you for sending that to us. Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Hopping on. Suzanne's part of our customer service team. Welcome. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Is that cool? Should I start? Okay, okay. If anyone's wondering, Sarah got a tan and changed her hair color. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm Nicole, I'm the lettering artist if you're wondering, because <laughs> I know some people might be confused. I, at the moment, am just drawing these. So if you guys are wondering why I'm not really talking, I'm just drawing these new cool pens that we got that will be on our website by the end of the weekend. So I wanted to show you guys just in case you guys are liking the pens that, are that came in the January box. Do they have colors on them or are there numbers still? Such a bummer. There's neither. <gasps> That's unacceptable, Tom. Yeah, about. so it's funny. Everyone can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll go and talk. Oh, this one is black. This is the only set that has black. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Caitlin. Oh, hi, Caitlin. That's our Caitlin, right? Caitlin Folson. Yep. Hi, Caitlin. Hope you're feeling better. I know. I hope you're feeling better. Okay. Am I good? I'm just going to start. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Let's Make Art. My name is Nicole Miyuki, and I am here doing a live with you guys to talk about different pens. So this is the perfect time if any of you are watching and you have specific lettering questions that I haven't been able to answer or you want to see me actually do it. This is the time for you guys while I'm talking to ask me questions. So don't feel free that any, or don't feel that any question isn't appropriate or valid. I want you guys to say everything and anything. Am I good? You're good. Okay. So, oh, hi, Marilee. Nice to see you in here. Oh, good, Caitlin, I'm glad you're feeling better. Okay, so I don't even have a January box to show you guys at the moment. But we, um, this is what we've been doing for January is this was our first month where we introduced the monthly lettering boxes. Before, if you are just tuning in, before we've been doing quarterly boxes, so we're now doing them monthly. So each month, just like watercolor, so we're all on the same page. 
And so each month is gonna be a different set of supplies. So I know there have been some questions, are we gonna get a journal every month? We won't, but for art journaling, that's something totally different. So this is just specifically for lettering. But what I wanted to go over was a few different pen options that, was, that came in the box. I gave you guys a bunch of different ones. Um, so, sorry, I just need to check something. Okay, the ones that came in the box. So we have, we do have some boxes left for sale, January boxes, if they want to get it. We can check. I'll let you know at the end if you, I think we do. Um, but we sell them after the month is over. Sometimes if we have leftover, we sell them offer to you guys. But the five different pens that were included, if you don't have our box I wanted to show you, is this is the Tombow dual brush pen. So this is one that I've used a lot in past brush pen projects. So you'll see the difference is this is a bigger brush pen, whereas this is a smaller one. So it's been really cool. This seems to be a fan favorite of you guys from our group. This is the new pen that we introduced. And this is a Pentel Fude Touch Sign pen. A lot of different words in there. <laughs> you might be able to search and find any of those ones but it's the brand is Pentel and the type is called Fude Touch. So what a brush pen is, if you're not familiar, both of these are brush pens and they're both flexible, which, mean, which means that you can get thin strokes and you can get thin strokes based on your amount of pressure. So the same thing here is I can get a thin stroke and I can get a thicker stroke. The reason why I wanted to include both of these is some people like one or the other. So just know that if you don't like the same one that everyone else likes, that is totally okay. Everyone has a personal preference. So these ones you can see are a lot bigger. These ones are smaller. So naturally you're gonna get different size strokes. The other difference that you guys might not know that I haven't talked about a lot is the flexibility of it. So every type of pen is different. So these, for example, are more flexible and which means they bounce back more. Whereas there's certain type of pens, and this is one of them, where it's harder, you have to apply more pressure. So if you guys have also heard of the Fudenosuke, this is another really popular one that I recommend for beginners as well. We also sell this on our website. Is This is a similar one. So you can see that these are very, very similar in size. Literally, I would say they're basically the same, but I'm going to write with both of them so you can see. So I'm applying thin on the up, thick on the down. So I'm going to go slow because this is different than our cursive. This is our lettering. So we're taking it stroke by stroke and going slower. So that's the Pentel one. And then this one, this one was included in the box. This one is not, but it's a similar one if you want to try. And I'd say the difference between the two is this one's actually a little bit stiffer, which means that I have to push more, I have to push harder to get more pressure. And it's the hard tip one. They also may make a soft tip one, but I find that this hard tip one may be easier if this is your first time figuring out. So it's even interesting to see, which shows that there's, oh, I wrote Pentel. I realized I should have wrote Fude, my bad. Fixed. All good. Well, that's confusing because this is called the Pentel Fude. You guys know what I'm doing. <laughs> Fude no suke. Which, what did I tell you it means? Brush. Small tip. I trust you. No, I, I remember we, we've talked about this before. Fude, fude, no su, fude, fude. in Japanese. Huh. I believe it means brush pen. I have forgotten this fact. I apologize. I'll do better. No, you're good. Okay, so, but I wanted to show you is that, so they're very similar if you're wondering which one should I get if you um, wanted to get one. They're both similar, so I would say, honestly, either one. Yeah, so it does mean brush. Um, I was just going to say it's really cool to see. Can they see from the camera? Black is not black. This is like a warm black, and this is a cool black. Yeah. Okay. Jumping off of that... Pat, nice to be able to see the pens. Never realized they had so many different kinds. Yes, there's so many different kinds and that's why, 
It's actually why I, I think Let's Make Art is really great is because we try and curate it for you guys because it's so overwhelming when you go into an art store. I get overwhelming as I get overwhelmed as an artist even going in. So we try and we've I've tried a bunch of different ones and we curate it so that you guys have a very good experience when you're starting out. So that but I wanted to say is that we also if you really like the Pentel one, which is the one that came in your box, we also have them in different colors. I don't know what they're if they have a name, but I'm just gonna call it green. Might be a fancier name. So there's a green, there's a blue. Am I an okay spot still, Keenan? Yep, looks great. Okay. Ooh, this is a green. Okay, green blue. That's a really pretty blue. So these are really great, especially if you're doing the dot journal with us because they are smaller and they're handy. Let me go through all of them. So I guess when, if you want to play pro and con is that the smaller Pentel, these ones, these are the colors that they come in. Whereas if you want to use, for example, the Tombow Dual Brush Pens, which are the other ones that I really love, they have a bigger tip, like I was showing, but they have, I think it's now 108, about different colors. So I guess that would be a pro and con if you want to play that. Um, these are the colors that they offer, but that's still a great array of colors. You can make a rainbow. But I wanted to show you is that even if you're using the Tombow, most people think, well, I'm drawing small in my notebook, so I'm just not going to use that brush pen because it's so big. What you can do is you can still use this big guy. Yeah. But I'm just going to apply a little bit less pressure. So if I were to write big with this, I might apply heavy pressure and write Tom. <laughs> or I can write this word the same exact size, but I can just apply less pressure. So I can still get, I can still draw even with this big thing. So if I were to draw really small, I just have to consciously be mindful of my pressure and I can still apply maybe medium pressure and then thin. So you might have to go a little bit slower and just release on your pressure a little bit more. So that is that. We have a yeah. Someone would like to know which ones are quicker drying because they're lefty and have trouble with have trouble with smearing. Heidi's a lefty too. And so there's definitely possible. That's a great question. I'm gonna test out. Oh yes, sorry. Thank you. I didn't realize that they, I guess that yeah, they can't hear you. Okay. The question was if you're a lefty especially and you're more worried about smearing, which is a fair thing to be worried about. Um, the question was, which ones do you recommend that smear less? And I actually haven't tested them in that way, so I'm gonna test this out. So this is the Pentel. And in regard to lefties, I'm not a lefty, I've been trying, is, and this is actually for everyone, I would test out if you're a lefty, pretend, or lefty or righty, stand straight, so sit up straight, and try and rotate your paper a little bit. So I am, well, I'm right-handed, so I tend to rotate my paper to the right because I tend to lean a little bit. If you're lefty especially, this is one of the tips that I like to give is that you can experiment. Is, is, this more, is it more helpful to have your pa paper angled? Some lefties I've seen write like this. It depends on if you're an underwriter or an overwriter. Which one are you, Heidi? Are you an under and over? I'm normally um, an underwriter, but I've changed trying to smear. the way that I grip. Oh, that smears. Oh, which is another tip that Heidi's given before is to um, change the, your grip, which means, so I'm assuming they meant the two smaller brush pens for me to test that, right? They would just like to know any brush pens that dry quickly. That one smeared really fast. Grin and I didn't give it that long and I kind of pushed hard. I wrote Pentel again. So I was gonna say my other tip for lefties is when Heidi was talking about the grip. So, and this is a great tip for everyone. There's a difference with gripping it. Can you guys see how I'm gripping it like this? This is super hard and awkward for me. 
Whereas if for me, if I grip a little bit closer and kind of hike up a little bit, I have more control. Remember, I'm not left-handed, but I have more control over my strokes. Okay, testing. Seems like the Fudenosuke with the smear is a little bit better. It's, yeah. As far as the other ones, I think the this one might smear. So this is a Tombow. So again, what I was saying was play with, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, play with your grip. And the other tip that I actually want to give this is kind of turning into a lesson, but I just want to say this because I don't say this often, is that for right or left handers, experiment with the way that you attack the letter. So what I mean by that is that if you are drawing, can you guys see how my hand is underneath the letters and I'm drawing like this? That is very awkward for me. Whereas if I come and attack the letter from the side, so I didn't change anything, I didn't do anything like this, I just moved my hand I have more control over my strokes by simply being aware of my hand placement. Tom's getting a lot of coverage on this. Yeah. Yeah, he is. <laughs> so if you guys can see that. So this might be awkward for most people is what I've seen when I've taught in person as well. If you rotate and attack from the side, that will help. Okay, there are a few, saw a few other questions. Okay, Pat, those were Pentels, right? So yes, these are the Pentels, sorry, that's confusing. These colors that I did at the bottom are the Pentel colors that we have available on our website. Those are the options. Um, Kim, on the left of the journal in the colors, yes. So that is a different pen that I'll go over in a second to not confuse anyone. Hi, Melanie. Will this video be available later? I missed the purse part. Yes, it will be available on both YouTube and Facebook. Don't worry about that. Merrily, Nicole, you should try the Pilot Fude Makase, I think. The downside is they bleed a little bit, but they are really small, smaller than the Pentel. Oh, I don't think I've ever heard of that pen. Merrily, thank you for that suggestion. I will definitely try that out. Okay. Is that on the LMA website, the magic video? Trying to think what the magic Make video. Magic oh, did I talk about? Did I say that? Else oh, yes. Do you mind adding that into the comments then? For I guess so. It was Leslie that asked that. Yes, Leslie. That one was with the Tombow dual brush pens, with blending them, which is a whole other thing that you can blend. Um, I love to do with the Tombow dual brush pens. Chantel, thank you for thinking of us lefties. Yes. I feel you, and I know that there's been some questions on that, so our team's trying to gather some tips to be able to give to you guys who are left-handed. Okay. Any other questions that are related to this? Otherwise, I'll move on. Well, we can always go back if there's any. Okay, moving on. So actually, let me show you guys the example. So this was the project that we did that released last week. And so on this one, if anyone hasn't seen this yet, this one, I use a Tombow dual brush pen, this guy. He's this, I think it was purple sage, 623. That's what I used to make this pattern. I did the, I used a bunch of different pens for this one. On this one for the lettering, I used the Fude touch sign that came, which was the one I was testing earlier right here. And then for the letters, or the numbers though, I used a micron pin, which I'm gonna wait to show that in a second. So micron pen is another pen I'll talk about in a second. And then on this side, I use the twin tone pens, which is a really cool one that, these are Tombow as well, they're not as popular, but they're really cool, especially to use in your journal or to when you're writing smaller. So I used, you guys had the, don't remember this color name either. Sax Blue. Yes. I saw it one, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is Sax Blue, so I really, sorry. The blue is Sax Blue. There's so many different pens. I need to talk about the mild liners as well. There were five different types of pens. Um, but I'm gonna talk about the Twin Tone first and show you guys, which is what I was testing. This is something different. 
So the pro and I guess the difference is about Tombow or these twin tones. They're double sided. I forgot to mention that your Tombow dual brush pen is also double sided. So there's a bullet tip and there's a brush tip. When you have your twin tones, when you're using these, you will notice that, let's test on this one, is that there's two different sides, but they create different line weights. So this one is not a brush pen. I'm gonna separate this for you guys. These are brush pens. This is a brush pen. This side, these are regular pens. So, but you can still create lettering as you guys have seen throughout our January projects is that you can still create the look of lettering if you like this look with just a regular pen. So even though when I draw this, it's one line weight, I can go back afterwards and add the thicker downstrokes, which is what creates the modern lettering look where it's thin on the up, thick on the down. And you can do that afterwards. So this one is a really cool one because it has two different sizes. So if you're drawing yourself different patterns or grids, this is a great pen to have. And we have them in a few different sets. So that's what I was testing, let's see. This one, I was testing this set. I don't know what the easiest way to show this is. This set is the bright, Brights one. And Keen and I were joking because Tombow doesn't have numbers on these or names. They're kind of letting us down. They have so much opportunity to name these pens. Yeah, which they do great for their dual brush pens. Weird, they don't even have it on here. Unacceptable. If, if there are colors, we'll find them out and we'll put them on our website for you guys. Um, but this is the bright set, so that's what I was doing right here. So this is a really pretty bright set of colors. So again, these are the twin tone ones that are not brush pens. These are the pastel ones. So these are also really, really pretty palette. So they're more pastel. And then I haven't tested this one out, so I don't have a page to show you guys, but these are the rainbow colors. So these ones are on our website. I don't know what's in the shot. Oh, I guess I can see my shot now. Okay. We might need to swap microphones. Oh, can you not hear me? Oh. Okay. Yeah, it did. Thank you. There you are. Good trade. Are there any questions related to... Um, someone is wondering the difference between the Fude Touch and Mokusuna no Suke, more of a side-by-side -side comparison for those two. Okay, I could do that after. Okay. Yep. On? Good? Yep. Okay. Okay, so there was a few questions that Heidi let me know of. Lisa asked, is there going to be a daily challenge each month or was that just for January? So, first of all, I'm so glad you guys are enjoying that. It's been so cool. So I wanna give so many kudos for people who are hopping on at any point. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, we have a January lettering challenge. That's a daily challenge going on in our Facebook group. So you can join our Facebook group because this is on our Facebook business page. So we have specific groups for the different mediums. So we have a watercolor group, we have a lettering group, and we have a journaling group. So you can join those. So we created it and I did that to go with this journal for every day. So you can see me writing the word out and then different ways and then you could see everyone in our group, their different way of doing it. So it's so really cool. I'm really proud of you guys for doing that because I know that it can be scary and intimidating to start something new. So I wanna preface with that. To answer your question, Lisa, I believe was her question, it will most likely not be something that we do every month. That was a lot more um, of I wanted to create something to encourage you guys to have a daily practice. So each month is going to be a little bit different, so we'll have different things. Um, but the daily challenge 
there's a couple reasons why we don't want to do it every month, but when I'm thinking of you guys is I don't want people to feel overwhelmed because sometimes if you see everything every day, you start to get down on yourself and if anyone's feeling this, I feel you, is you feel like you're behind and so you come day 14, you just may never even start. So there's a few reasons why we won't do it every month, but know that myself and the entire team is thinking about you and the best, the best experience so that you can learn lettering and make it feel approachable and not intimidating. Um, so we will be doing a different one for March that I'm designing right now. For February, we're gonna play around, maybe it's a one-off challenge, but there won't be one specifically that's daily. Just so you are kept in the loop. Um, okay, let's see. Mal, oh hi Mal. How many different pens do you have in your personal stash? I wish I had all of these. <laughs> um, my personal pen that I have, I always usually have a Micron, which is a good segue into talking about this. I actually don't keep very many on hand, um, but when I usually create, I'm usually at my desk. So I guess my desk is a little bit different. Um, but the reason why I created the box for you guys and had the different assortment, but a wider range of them, is that so that you guys can see which one you like or don't like. Um, so, okay, but what I want to show is the Micron, which is my favorite. Actually, this one doesn't smear. These pens are great. Illustrators really, really love these. So this is a Micron pen. The only thing is that this isn't a brush pen, so I understand that that might not be helpful in that sense, but the folligraphy that I was doing earlier for the lefty who was asking, I would try this pen. So this is a Micron. This is the 05 one that came in your box. But what I was showing as well is that just like I was doing with the Sax Blue, is that you can still create the look of lettering by just doing it after. So these ones we have in a couple different colors. I won't finish that all out. This is the same black. And if anyone is ever confused, we found this out in our team and I refer to this number and you might see this number, which you probably can't actually see. It says 0.45 mm. I don't know why they do that. It's very confusing. So I don't really have a tip on how to get around that. <laughs> Just make sure when you're referring to it. We, I think we have, we say both, right? We say 05 and 0.45 on our website. Okay, but there's a blue one. So there's a few different colors. In addition, if you guys didn't know this, Micron pins come in different sizes. So Michelle was saying that it, it does sometimes still smear. The Micron? I yeah. forgot to do the test. Because she writes more quickly. What the heck? These don't smear for me usually. I am determined to find a pen that doesn't smear. Maybe it's that Le Pen one. I have one here. So this is a sneak peek into February. That was the one you were using earlier. Yeah, that was the one that wasn't erasing. So. Not to confuse or overwhelm anyone, this is gonna be in your February box. <laughs> but this is a Le Pen. Nope. It must have been. It's because, so it, if you wait a little bit, it erases okay. Yeah. It doesn't take that very long to dry though. Yeah, I was gonna say that if, so who was asking that specifically? I don't, I was going to address her personally. <laughs> so Michelle mentioned it, the original question. Michelle, does her last name have an S in it? I feel like I know her name. Mm -hmm. Anyways, going back and forth. Michelle, so if this is happening to you, I don't want you to get discouraged and feel like you can't do this because you're lefty. So I'm addressing you, I'm addressing lefties, I'm addressing yeah. everyone who feels like this may be too hard. I feel like I have a mustache of blue on me. <laughs> Yeah, no, from you're, smearing, you're good. You're good. Um, is that try and go, try and challenge yourself to go a little bit slower. So whether you're right-handed or left-handed, I'm not gonna use this pen anymore because that's different. 
let's let me show you the difference. Oh, I was about to open this. The different sizes. Um, try and go slower. So. Oh, Michelle Ferguson, I'm not. Okay. Wow, the, this is tiny. What I was gonna say is, whether you are doing whatever type of lettering style you're doing, you might be used to doing cursive and drawing like that. That didn't smear. This is because this is so tiny. Okay, so instead of writing faster, which I know you may be more comfortable with, Try and take it slower. Yeah. So if you take it stroke by stroke, then your hand might not hit it as much. The other thing that Heidi was mentioning, let me use the pen tail again, is experiment with your hand positioning. So I know I've seen some lefties who tend to smear is because they come at it at, I guess what way would it be? underwriting and so you kind of smudge it like that. Try and see if either you can come up from a different way or try and, I'm trying to think how to explain this, rotate your hand a little bit so you're not levitating but by coming up on top of it whether you're right-handed or left-handed might be able to show it easier if I'm left right-handed. It's like rocking your hand forward so that you're more on like your the, finger, like at your face knuckle rather yeah. than on your wrist. Yeah. Okay, so, that, so if you come rather than like this where I'm flat against it and I rock a little bit forward, am I in, can everyone see that? They can see your hand rocking, but they can't <laughs> see what you're writing. It's okay. So I am able, I get where the smearing comes from, but because I'm rocking a little bit forward, I am avoid, how can they see that? I'm avoiding my hand going like that and smearing. Does that make sense? I just don't want people to stop because of the smearing situation and there's not a right pen. Heidi really likes actually the aquash brush pen, which would also have smearing because it's watercolors. It's just how you hold it. Okay. Okay. Michelle, the micron once dry won't smear if you go over it. Maybe that's the thing, is they all, once they dry, they're fine. Yep. Just wait seven to 12 seconds. <laughs> For each stroke. First stroke. <laughs> okay, what other questions were there? I will, can talk about one more pen if needed. Are there any other questions? Okay. Bef Oh, thank you, okay. I'll do that, um, okay. Before I forget, for everyone who's here, I have a quick demo that I can do to show you to, that might help. I believe it was Michelle that was talking about the lefty question, is what if you grab, if you have different colors, whatever brush pen you like to use, try and grab different colors, or maybe it's just two different colors. I'll write Michelle's name. Take it stroke by stroke, and this will force you to go slower. So these different strokes are the foundation strokes, and we have a beginner lettering series that's really great that goes over that if you're new to this and you can practice the foundation strokes. So you can see that I'm writing her name taking it stroke by stroke. And I guess each letter is a stroke here, but you'll notice that the H is actually drawn in two different strokes. So this is a great practice to train yourself to go slower. That's one thing I wanted to say. And it's really cool to look at. <laughs> okay, comparison between the Pentel and the fude, or the funosuke. I would say they are super similar. It is a personal preference on 
how the the amount of pressure that you want to apply if you have a steadier hand then i think this one might be a little bit easier i'm trying to think if everyone's so different so that's why it's so hard and why i'm a little bit hesitant to tell you to do one or the other but the difference is that the fudenosuke is a little bit stiffer and that's because this is the brush pen one or the hard tip one fudeno so I have to, I'm pushing a little bit harder to get that thick stroke. But in comparison, I guess I can get a little bit thinner of a stroke, but it's pretty similar and it's super minor. The difference, I guess, is that this one's a little bit lighter and this one's a little bit darker. Um, the other thing I will mention for all brush pens is that it depends on how long you've also used them. So the more you use them, the more flexible they're gonna be because you're pushing so much on them. So naturally, especially the Tombow Dual Brush Pens, when you get them, they might be really, really stiff. After a while, after using them, you'll notice that they get more used, they get more floppy, they still work totally fine. It just requires you to be a little bit more mindful because it's not as stiff. So, okay. Oh, okay, Julianne, I was talking to you when I was mentioning all those, so. Okay, Melanie, is the Pentel more like the Fudenosuke soft tip or hard tip? Great question. So the Fudenosuke comes, which I actually have right here. I was hesitant on saying this because these are more pens to tell you guys about. But just to educate you, Fudenosuke, different brand come or different than the pen that came in your box has a hard tip and a hard tip and a soft tip the hard tip is blue there's it says it on here the hard tip is blue and then the soft tip is black they look the same this we're going to include the soft tip in a future box so you guys will get to play with that in a little bit but i was going to say that the the difference is that the what melanie's mentioning this is the soft tip, which means that it's more flexible. So actually, Melanie, testing these out in person, the Pentel is in between. So this is the stiffest, the, the hard tip. I wish I could write titles for you guys. <laughs> this is the Fudenosuke hard tip. This is, um, needs more pressure to apply. This is in the middle. This is the soft one. Hopefully that answers. What pen, Laura, what pen was used for Michelle? Michelle, gosh, I wish, sorry again that I can't have titles. Those were the Pentel Fude Touch Sign Pen. A lot of words in that. Fudenosuke Fude. Maybe. If that helps you guys. Thank you, whoever answered that. Okay. <laughs> oh, hi, Audrey. Audrey was the one that made us the, oh, it's not there anymore. It's somewhere. The llama. Oh, really? Yeah, that's Audrey. Hi, Audrey. She loves the name of this episode, and it cracked me up. What we still have it. It's yeah. somewhere here. I know, yeah. We still have it somewhere. Okay. Pat, oh my gosh, I love that different color strokes that will help to remember to lift the pen and go slower. Good. I'm really glad. Okay. Okay. If there's any other questions, holler. One last thing to show you guys. Mild liners. These are really, really cool pin. So the this we used in, I used it on the leaves because it's also dual, it's dual tipped. So there is a bullet side and there's a broad side that is great for a highlighter. They also come in brush pens but I use them as the highlighter part. But we're gonna be doing this, this is what I use sometimes, oh no, that was the, oh, so use them, you have the blue-green one. This is what comes in your box. And so it's great when you're doing journaling, or when you're doing bullet journaling or dot journaling if you want to do that, excuse me, is um, you can use these for the highlighter side or the other side, like I said, which is really great. They. The reason why I love these ones is that they don't bleed through. Actually, none of this really bleeds, 
through, but those ones really don't. So these are a great pen to use, um, which reminds me, there's a question from customer service that got asked if you can use both sides of this journal and if, they, if these pens bleed. When it comes to bleeding, I tested a couple different journals. It was kind of a little chaotic, but I tested a lot and I specifically chose this journal because it doesn't bleed. A lot of them, if you've tested, I'm trying to think of other ones I tested. There was one, there was one from Michaels that I tested that bled a little bit. There were a few that the paper was just a little bit thinner. So if you don't have this specific journal, this one specifically is from Carpe Diem, is just know that some of them might bleed through. This one doesn't, and so I want you guys to, to use both sides. You totally can use both sides. If you find that it is, because there was a customer that did find, I guess they were using the Micron pen, and it was bleeding through. So when you're using this, let's see, so this is a couple strokes. What I think may be happening is if you have a very dense area and you go over it several times, uh, I don't even know if they could see that. It, this is all, it's also very light. You can't even see it, so it's right here. <laughs> Couldn't see it very well on either camera. Okay, yeah. So that's what may be happening is that with anything, is if you go over a lot, you're kind of scraping into the paper eventually. Not that I think that anyone was doing that, but that might be why. But you can tell as I, I use the Micron pens for a lot of this, all of these pens, and they don't bleed through. The only one that kind of bled through is if you guys can barely see that. So this was on the goals one, which we'll be releasing in a few weeks. And I went over and I did this color a few different times. So that's why on the back, it's just a little bit darker as well. But again, it's super minor and that actually doesn't bother me. But I wanted to explain that as well. Going back to, sorry, going back to mild liners now. So I tested these one out. This is such a beautiful color assortment that we also have on our website. So these are made by Zebra, these are the mild liners, and these are the different colors that we have that you can get. Like I said, they're also double-sided. So I use the broad tip to draw these ones, and I use the smaller tip to write out the names. Okay, Mal, it might not bleed, but it can ghost. That is a better word. I've heard that before, thank you, Mal. That's a cool word, it does ghost, ghost pen. Because it's kind of there, but it's not. Yeah. Like a ghost. So yes, ghost, that's a better word. Okay. In Scooby-Doo. Dawn. Oh, hi, Dawn. I hope you're doing well. Holler, can you blend the Pentel pens with another brand's like Tombow blending pen? Best of both worlds, maybe. Let's test that out. I believe you can because I'm doing that with a couple different brands, but I'm gonna test out specifically. So she's asking if you can blend, I only have this purple one. We're going to test this out. So if you can blend the Tombow with the Pentel. Those are the ones that you said, right? Oh, the Tombow blending pen. Do we have one? Do you mind grabbing the clear pen out of that box if there's a clear one? But I'm going to test out. So these might be too drastic of colors. But in that magic tutorial that someone referenced, I went over blending techniques, and one of them is that you can add on top, and then you go back with the original color. But yeah, heck yes, you can totally blend these out. Thank you. Ooh, that is a really pretty color combo. So this, the, the more purpley color is the Tombow Dual Brush Pen, and then the blue that I did on top was the Pentel. So her question was, can you mix brands? And you 100% can. Thank you. So this other one, this is a blending. If you ever get a pack of Tombow Dual Brush Pens, you might be wondering, what is this white pen? Why is it white? Why doesn't it draw? I can't see it. Nothing wrong with you. This is also double-sided. Is, I use those in, I only, sorry. Can you grab me another color? of this that's maybe similar, not too different. Yeah, perfect, oh, I love that one. I think that's a peacock blue that we used from the, uh, three, three. yeah? I think so. I knew you love that one. I love that one, okay. So, 
I'm going to blend, do the same technique. Whoa, whoa. They look so, they're so similar when you look at the, no, we're good. When you look at, that just was weird. Okay. Maybe I need a different, a darker, a, a really dark one, because that looked really, maybe just a darker purple. Yeah, because you can't really tell that I'm blending. So as I'm blending, though, I just want to mention, thank you, is that like you guys saw when I was experimenting with the Micron pen, is that if you, if you give the paper a lot of love by doing a lot of strokes on the paper, you will eventually r kind of rip through it a little bit. So if you're blending, I suggest not to do it in this journal as much. You might want to use in the box, I was using the Bristol paper if you want a final one, but let's do it one more time. Do it from the top. So blending is I'm gonna draw little blades of grass, and then I'm using, the reason why you have this white pen is that you can overlap and go over and then blend those together. So then it's more of a seamless transition. So to Melon, or to Dawn's question, and then these are great, even though there's a little purple on there on the tip, if you ever have these, just wipe it off and you're good. Okay, so I'm gonna blend, I think what she was referring to is that can you blend, do the same technique. So it'll be interesting because with this technique, these are such smaller brush pens, so it won't have the same effect in that sense when I do one big stroke. But what I can do is I can make this a thicker stroke. Do we have a purple? Maybe not. Okay, we'll go with green. I don't, who? It's kind of a funky color combo. Can't really tell. Hold on, let me try one more. This is the yellow. So again, I'm just drawing little blades of grass on top of it in a different color. And then I'm going to use the colorless blender, which is what this is called. And it still works. So I'm assuming this is because these are, I think both of them are water-based pins, markers, so that you can blend both of them. So yes, it does work. Wow, that's really pretty too. Again, it got a little funky because this paper isn't meant to be like that, but great question, Don. Okay, I think my phone died. Sorry, guys. Okay. That would happen. <laughs> okay, I think as far as all the pen assortments, I went over them all. We have, I didn't really mention, but I did kind of, is that this is, now I have so many things going on here. This is the 005. This is a thicker version of it. And this is the 05. If anyone's wondering if you want smaller versions. Someone wanting to know how you get such consistent lettering, basically the consistent thickness and thin lines. So, I'm trying to think how, what a good way to practice is. I get hesitant on saying this because I know I get fresh when people say this, that it comes with practice. So I want you to know that, that when you're looking at me, please don't compare yourself. And I'd rather, I want to show you that there's so many different ways to do this. However, I understand the frustration because we want our lettering to look, or whatever we create to look perfect and to look exactly like we want. So a good way to practice is just take a word. If you don't like foundation strokes, if you want to create something actually to have, take one word and maybe it's your name or a word that you're trying, maybe it's your word of the year. I suggest to write that several different times and just solely think about pressure. So let's see if I don't have a, I haven't decided a word this year, but last year my word was joy. So if I'm writing the word joy and I'm thinking about my pressure is I might, maybe I'll just write J's in this entire section and I'm going to be really mindful of heavy pressure, light pressure, 
heavy pressure, light pressure. Because what happens is that we tend to just go on autopilot and not really think about it. So if you're actively, and this is why this is actually a good meditation practice, is if you actively are aware of that, and that's what I've been trying to do with myself, being a le as I'm trying to be a lefty, is I'm trying to really think about, okay, thick on the down, thin on the up. And you can see my head's even moving, so maybe that's a fun <laughs> practice to add to it. But that will help. And so as you're experimenting with that, if you find I'm still kind of shaky, I'm not really sure, go back and watch my video that's, I don't remember what number it is, but it's the beginner lettering series that's called Tips and Tricks. And in that, I go over a few different ways, like I was going over earlier, of different ways that you can attack the letter. You can hold the pen differently because you might be practicing a way that's not, that doesn't work for you. So if you just take one word, that might help you to be consistent with that. Yeah, Keenan has it. You also said one time that if you do the lightest touch you can and then the most aggressive, highest pressure, that'll help you kind of figure out what, like oh, how yeah. high and how low you can go. So that might be another... You can take my job. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch yes. me write my name, then you'll say never mind. <laughs> I love that. So what Keenan is referring to is that... And this is great, especially if you're just starting out, is that if you're getting to know this pen, it's a different type of pen, it's probably different than anything you're used to, is that you can try and challenge yourself. Can I do this entire line of the thinnest strokes? So I'm very, very lightly grazing. And maybe what you can even do is I'm gonna challenge myself. I'm gonna go from thin to thick all the way. So I'm very lightly grazing. And then as I gradually go, I'm going to start to apply a little bit more pressure. And then a lot of pressure. So thank you for mentioning that. That is a very great exercise that you can do to help your hand get accustomed to the different thin and thicks that you can create. But like I said, know that it's something that you have to... and. You can use my right and left hand as an example. I've been doing lettering for a very long time. My right hand is accustomed to it because I've been doing it a lot. My left hand might be like you guys if it's a beginner. And I will tell you that when I'm creating these projects, I write with my left hand actually. Not, not in the final thing that you guys see, but when I'm designing these projects, I have you in mind, especially you lefties, and I actually practice and I think, is this a great size for you guys to practice as a lefty because I understand. So. I use my left hand because I think of you guys every time when I design. Hopefully that helps answer that question. Yeah, so now the follow-up question, what kind of pens are best if you want to get the drastic line weights? So really thin, really thick. The Tombow dual brush pens. Because they're the biggest brush pen right now that we're offering. So for example, is I'm lightly grazing, so I'm going to do the same exercise. I'm lightly grazing, then I'm going to start to apply even more pressure. And then actually what I'm going to do is, because thick on the down is typically what we're doing in lettering, I'm going to switch up, and now I'm going to go down, but I'm going to start to apply even more pressure. So now, you guys can see I went from that to that just simply by applying pressure. So if you're wanting to get that variance, this is probably the pen I would recommend, solely on the fact that this is the hardest I pressed here for this small Pentel guy, and this was the hardest I pressed for this guy. So simply by size. Okay. Any other questions? I'm trying to think if there's anything else. We'll talk about the February in a Thank second. Thank you for the blending lesson. Oh, cool, yeah. I would go back in the, the magic one is a really good one to watch too. Okay, cool. So we are going to be, do oh, I know. Two more things I wanted to tell you guys. Another great pad, if you like this journal and you want to even do it more, I have two, oh. Do you mind grabbing the Lectrum journal that I think Alexis was gonna take a picture of? So there's two different other paper that I would recommend for you guys is, this is a Rhodia dot pad. So Rhodia is a really great brand. They have this paper that I've been practicing and kind of experimenting. Those are different colors we're gonna go through later. But this is what I actually did all of the challenges on, was it was just easier on a bigger scale for me to do this. But if you can see, they're also dots, so it's the same as this. <coughs> 
But if you want to get a bigger pad, this is a great one. Did I do something? No. I just have a, a bubble in my throat. <laughs> okay, so this, like I said, oh, excuse me, is a really great pad. This is a Dodia rot, dot pad, rot pad, dot pad. Rot pad. We sell this on our site. <laughs> Dodia rod pad. <laughs> Dodia rod pad. <laughs> okay. And then the other thing that I want to show you guys, if you are liking the journal size is, first of all, I would say, jur uh, bullet journaling is a thing. You might he see the words B-U-J-O, right? Have you ever seen that? Yeah. I always thought it was Bujo or looks like bougie. Anyways, it's an entire world of lettering that I will not go over. However, if you look on YouTube, there's so many different videos. So if you like that, I just want to explain to you that that is a whole nother world that is a great way to incorporate lettering. I wanted to, the, for me personally, the only, the, the, the thing that I want our customers or you guys to be mindful of is don't get paralyzed by making things perfect. So the thing with those is sometimes if I bullet journal, the, it intimidates me because I don't wanna mess things up. So I feel like I need to make it perfect and I can't mess up in my own journal. So that's why I wanted to in introduce something that was maybe a little bit more accessible. This also can be your bullet journaling and that's the projects that we're doing to incorporate it. But this is also your daily practice journal. So I love how I've seen so many people in our group using that and incorporating this journal into your daily practice. So I want to explain that. If you are really liking journaling, this is a really popular and really great dot journal that it's a harder cover. This is the, I'm not saying it right, do you remember how to say it? It's Lightrum. Lightrum. With a, like Lightrum. 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 <laughs> yeah. Lightrum. It's a soft. I was, I wanted to say Lectrum. Like, Lectrum, th yeah. yeah. It looks like that. But it's a really great band. So we're also going to have this on our site in a few different colors as well, but it's a hard cover. So this will be up on our site by the end of the weekend. That I want to show you guys is I haven't used it quite yet, this specific one, but it's great because it has, it's a hard cover. It has, um, I love using these things for that I know where I've written on or I've ended up. So I just wanted to show that as well. This is a very good one to use. Okay, last thing, let me wrap it up, is January preview. So, February. dang it, February preview. January is happening now. Do we find out if, they, if we still have some extra? We're showing up sold out right now, but that may not be forever. We're looking into it. Oh, okay. So not at the moment, maybe by the end of the weekend. We'll have some more. Um, but if you can't, if we don't have that, you can get the pens as well. February is, we have that on our website now that you can get. If you're a subscriber already, you're going to get this starting the end of the month. So you have till January 31st if you want to get this box as well. But I just want to give a really quick preview and explain how each month is a little bit different. So like I said, we're not going to be doing a dot journal every single month. This one is, am I okay overhead? Yep. Okay, so there's also an, an, a really cool stop motion video if you want to watch on our website that um, you can see the full unboxing. But this one, so this theme I'm calling it Love Notes. So this one we're actually going to be learning how to make different cards. So I had some examples. So we're going to be using, this is where the Le Pens come in. I'm going to be using two different Le Pens and a Jelly Roll. And we're also going to be using watercolors. What I want to show is that this is yet another way to incorporate lettering into your life. That is what we're trying to do here is showing how you, how you can bring art in general into your life in small ways and have it not feel overwhelming. So we're going to be making different cards together and using incorporating watercolors and lettering. So that's what this box is. It's going to come with a few different envelopes that you can design. and. If you guys didn't know this, our boxes come with step-by-step -step sheets. So if sometimes you can't watch the video and you just want to draw or make it really quick on the spot, is that there's step-by-step -step sheets that have it. These are practice sheets that I've used while filming. So those are also included. All of that is designed. And so there's four different projects, once one released a week. And just wanted to give a little preview. So again, that's February's month that will be coming out. 
then. Nice. Any other questions? <laughs> I feel like I've been talking a lot. Well, this was, I mean, your information, <laughs> so you're good. Okay. I don't think there are any more questions. They love the February box. Look at the February box. Oh, yay. I'm really, really excited for you guys to see that, too. Um, tried to break down the prints as much as I could, so if you have any other questions, feel free to either leave them in the comments or you can ask our customer service team. But all of these, if you don't see them at the moment, they will be on our website by the end of the weekend. Um, have fun. The reason why, like I said, we just, we curate these boxes so that you guys can try out the pens that I believe for that specific thing are really good to use. And then we want to offer you different colors so that if you find, I really like that brush pen, what other colors do they have? You can go to our site and then find that. So, whew, you need to drink some water. You need to go to the bathroom now. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy this and it was informative. Um, there's a lot to know about lettering and so I try to really break it down for you guys. We will introduce our next project releasing tomorrow. Lettering has their project every Friday. Watercolors Wednesday. Watercolor Wednesday. I just realized that. Watercolor well, what? It's like we planned it. Watercolor Wednesday. Art journaling Thursday. Today. If you haven't watched it, there's a beginner series that Je Jesse just released if you're wondering about the art journaling. And then lettering is on Fridays. So, hope you guys have a good rest of your week and then weekend. Bye. I was copying Keenan.